Blocks away from her father's old stomping grounds at Harvard, Aoife Shovlin is following in his footsteps, one mile at a time. I've mostly joined the high school cross country team because, like, I, because, well, partially because my dad used to run in like high school and college, so I thought that'd be cool. Shovlin, a junior at the Cambridge Ringe and Latin School, didn't sign up for the sport with the highest of expectations when she entered high school. I've been working with Aoife since she was a, a freshman. Um, I remember like she joined in the fall. Um, we weren't sure that she would be as good as she ended up being. When I first started, I didn't really actually like the sport that much. I kind of just wanted to compete and I liked like my teammates. Shovelin says it was her teammates that kept her coming back to run lap after lap, not only for cross country, but indoor and outdoor track. In all three seasons, we kind of run everywhere together. And then I also just really like competing. Like, just the races are super exciting. It's like a lot of adrenaline, like, especially like the bigger races, and there's like kind of bigger crowds. In her case, the bigger the stage, the better the performance. Aoife's now won back to back Division I all state titles in Massachusetts. It was like really exciting. Like, the first one was just like amazing. It's like, Starting that season, I had no idea that I would be able to do that. And then this season, I was really determined to kind of like keep that going. She kept that going all the way to the Foot Locker Cross Country Nationals in San Diego last month, where she placed 32nd. I've always like been in awe of her as a runner. Audrey Giordano's run alongside Aoife since they were both freshmen with the Falcons. I always like sit next to her on the bus because before meets, a lot of people are just like super stressed and Aoife always has like a good attitude and I know if I sit next to her, she'll give me a better attitude too. She's very good at kind of knowing like what she's capable of, when she's capable of it. With more than a year to go before she graduates, Shovelin believes she's capable of adding her name to her school's record books, setting her sights on the top two mile time for indoor track, having already broken the outdoor record. Aoife Shovelin is this week. For a basketball player who grew up on Bryant Avenue, perhaps it was meant to be. His name is... Kobe. It's a pretty cool name. I love it. North Quincy High School's starting point guard, Kobe Nguyen, doesn't just share a first name with his favorite player of all time, he also wears number 24 in honor of Kobe Bryant. I look at his highlights every day, even though I might not play like him, but I always try to watch him and just like listen to what he says. The Mamba mentality is one Nguyen's emulating as captain of the Raiders in just his junior season. Well, he's the type of kid that I wish I had five of. You know, I, I want him to handle the ball and the ball in his hands, but I also want him off the ball because he shoots the ball so well. Kobe first picked up a basketball in kindergarten when his now head coach, Kevin Barrett, was his PE teacher. Always a good athlete, always a standout amongst his peers. Um, very athletic, inquisitive. He grew up watching his cousin play for North Quincy. I always looked up to him. When he was playing here, I would come to every single game, I would try to at least, and always watch him play, try to be like him. Now, roles are reversed. It's Kobe's family filling up an entire fan section, practically every home game, to see him shine. His family, they come really deep, like i say about like 30 or more, and they're probably the loudest like section in the game. Knowing that's my family, like the biggest crowd, I mean like, there's nothing else they can do but put a smile on my face. It just makes me happy. That's tough, man. You feed off of that? I do, yeah. It's been that way ever since Kobe was elevated to varsity as a freshman. Kobe was our sixth man, and he was kind of thrust into the role of um, being our point guard uh, as a freshman uh, and really stepped in and hit the ground running. Two years later, he's the Raiders' leading scorer, averaging around 18 points per game. I don't really care about the stats or whatever. I really just want to lead my team, help them get better in any way possible. He's super locked in when he's playing. He, all he wants to do is win. Did that you kind of see like a flip of the switch? Oh yeah, from like, cause like when he's outside of basketball, he's always like joke, joking around and stuff. You're like, And then once it hits game time, it's a whole different Kobe. And the student athletes just as focused in the classroom maintaining a 4.4 GPA, according to his coach. There's no better kid to emulate than, than Kobe Nguyen for any of the elementary kids that are striving to be a student athlete someday. Kobe is striving to 
one day in the not too distant future, perhaps play college ball. I just love the sport. I just like, my whole goal in life is just to play basketball when I'm older. I don't really know what I want to do like after this, but hopefully it's something playing with involving basketball. North Quincy's Kobe Nguyen is this week's Thousands of years old, wrestling is widely known as the most basic form of recreational combat. And its athletes are said to be the most athletic of the martial arts. Ethan Harris may be the best athlete in his high school. Taunton High School senior is a three-sport athlete. Football, baseball, and wrestling. Football, baseball, and wrestling. What's your favorite sport? It's gotta be wrestling. I Why is see that? us behind us. I feel that it's all on you. I'm working my hardest, and whatever I put in is what I get out. And that same winning energy he brings to wrestling is taking him to the school's record books, shattering the record for total wins with 136, and is currently on a 34-game win streak. Wrestling is the most important to me. I love it the most. It's very rewarding and taking at the same time. Just being able to push myself every single day and work hard and reward me at the ends with my hand being raised is huge to me. The lack of student participation almost brought the sport into submission. That's until Coach Addison DeVeo brought it back to life about a decade ago. He believes that Ethan's work ethic has made a big difference. Dedicated, hard-working wrestler. Um, always the first on the mat, always the last one off the mat, always doing his best. He's always super critical of himself, but always trying to get better. Are wrestlers that go up against Jim intimidated? Um, they know about him? Yes, yes. Most wrestlers know about him. They know what he's about to bring. Um, they probably have game plans against him, but you can't game plan against a kid like Ethan. He'll change it up. Very soon, Ethan will have to change it up, going from his work on the wrestling mat to the diamond, as a baseball team will go for the three-peat, as they are the defending back-to-back -back champions. Little did Ethan know. We have a surprise for you. This is your championship ring for baseball. From Taunton High School. Thank you. How awesome is that? It's awesome. Wow. Huge. Show it to the camera. You got tears in your eyes. <laughs> That is so cool. That's like a Super Bowl ring. It is. Right? Second one. Ethan is a gift to his community. He somehow finds the time to make a difference. When he's not exercising his student athletic abilities, he's active with the Muscular Dystrophy Association. Through DECA, participates in wrestling clinics for elementary and middle school students, and he's a member of the National Honor Society, which recognizes outstanding high schoolers. I'm amazed that he has so much in him that his academics don't suffer, his way he treats his family doesn't suffer. He got his championship ring today. I saw. It's pretty fantastic. And his eyes sort of welled up. Mm-hmm. Because he knew how special that was. Yep. When you watch your son receive that, how special is that to you? Um, I don't know that I could put it into words. I'm not usually at a loss for words, but um, I think it's just because he, he's just so dedicated in it. He, he, I think, recognizes how fortunate he is. Do you have a signature move that uh, that you use on people? Uh, I'm a big neutral guy. I like being on my feet, working takedowns. I'd probably have to say my high crotch is my favorite move. Really? Which means what? It's you come in from a single leg right here, and then I switch off to a double and drive through. Unfortunately, I got a chance to take part in Ethan's signature move, and it wasn't pretty. Ethan Harris of Taunton High School. The champion! This guy! I'm out! Is this week's BZ's MVP. Way to go, Nicole! We sometimes hear about a high school player hitting a milestone. In this case, it's Nicole Burns of Lexington Christian Academy who recently reached a thousand points. And get this, she's only a junior. Those who are close to her say 
She got this good due to her work ethic. She is in the gym all the time, both here at LCA, um, but also at home with her family. She's shooting, uh, she's playing in the off season. She's, she's doing all the extra work that it, it does take to be as good as she is. It doesn't, it doesn't just come, it takes a lot of work. Well, first of all, I love the arc that you have on your shot. Where'd you learn that? <laughs> From my dad. I, would, I always go shooting with him and he always like says that the most important part is legs and getting the ball to rotate when you shoot. A thousand points in high school as a junior. Yeah. Not many people can do that. No. But you learned it. You worked hard for it, didn't you? Yeah. It was, it, that was my goal for this year was um, Coach Jenna had asked us for three goals and that was one of my goals was to get a thousand points this year. Entering that game, Nicole was eight points shy of a thousand. Her teammates were confident. After all, she was averaging 25 points a game. So you know you got a shot that's going a thousand points the yes. day of the game. How nervous were you going in? Um, I was really nervous because like I like knew inside I was gonna get it in that game, but it was just like to get those eight points. Like it usually doesn't take me a whole half to get like eight points. And I really needed it to get it in that game because I had made my mom come from work. My mom left work without like like telling her telling her job, but she told her job <laughs> the same day. So and she had to drive an hour to go to my team. So, so you want to make sure you got yeah, it. Yeah I wanted to make sure <laughs> yeah I wanted to make sure I got it. How proud are you of your daughter? I, I'm so proud of her and, and, and her work ethic and, and that she goes about and does everything the right way. And as good as she is, you also know that you're up front with her on what she needs to work on. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you know, she, she's, she has the outside shot. Everybody knows it. They put three people on her to got her. She has to get the inside game, and, and that'll get her up into the 30s a game. She's at 25 a game now, you know? So working on that inside game. We're working on the inside game, reverse layups, and dribbling through the zone and not, not committing to a shot when you go up. When you Sounds go through like the you're lane. tough on her. I'm hard, but I could be a lot harder. <laughs> you can tell that she loves basketball and put, pours her heart into it, and that's really cool. Um, but she also encourages other players and really motivates them. Since the 1,000 point was scored on the road, the team wanted to do something special for Nicole during their next home game. The entire team and coach signed a game ball to honor her achievement. When you get presented with the ball that will say 1,000 points on that special ball, what are you gonna do with it? Um, I'm gonna put it in like one of those clear frames and keep it in my room. And what would that ball mean to you? That ball like mean like me accomplishing like probably like my biggest goal that I'll probably accomplish in high school besides that and getting like an offer. Those would be my two biggest like things. Nicole Burns of Lexington Christian Academy is this week's BZ's MVP. She's had a flair for flying through the air basically ever since she could walk. I started doing gymnastics when I was about two years old. Introduced to gymnastics through a mommy and me class when she was a toddler, Annie Spencer, a junior at Marshfield High School, says the sport just stuck. <laughs> well, and I dedicate a lot of my time to doing gymnastics, um, so it's very important to me and I feel like it's a big part of my life. She's never satisfied. She'll always go off and work on her own. Growing up around balance beams and bar routines, those years of work set the stage for Spencer to become a standout on her high school team by the time she was a sophomore, according to her coach, Richard Bertone. Annie has become more of a leader just by virtue of her scores and her work ethic in the gym, and everyone follows suit. She's a super good role model. Like, she doesn't need someone to tell her to do a routine, or like, if she messes up, like, next practice, she's in the gym working that skill to perfect it. Come on, Annie! Propelled by a first place finish on balance beam last year at the MIA's state individual championships, Spencer became a captain this season and competed in all four events, leading the Lady Rams to back-to-back -back Patriot League crowns. It just means a lot to um, contribute to the team and just put up the good scores to help us win. And the scores she's put up earned Spencer a spot in the all-around state individual championships Monday, 
where she came in second on beam. From those mommy and me classes, towards the top of her class, in the sport she's loved from day one. Annie Spencer is this week's BC's MVP! For me, it's kind of been not a long trip, but a hard trip for me to get from where I started as a freshman to here. The road to becoming a history-making wrestler for Watertown High School started with a school tour, Tessa Masters' freshman year. A girl who was a senior from my freshman advisory class was touring us around the school on the first day of school. Mm -hmm. And she just said, oh, this is the wrestling room. I'm the captain. And I was like, I'll try it out. And I just kind of stumbled into it. The stumble she did initially. You know how first impressions last. Well, Tessa's first trip to the mat for a match, it left a mark. It was against this really big, jacked boy. I remember, I don't remember where he was from, but he basically just picked me up and put me on the mat and I was pinned and it was, it was a quick match. But instead of tapping out and calling that her wrestling career right then and there, <laughs> Tessa got up and got back to work. She is the toughest girl in the state. You know, she gets up every time she gets knocked down. Her teammates took note as she pressed on, refusing to back down from any match against any boy or girl. There was a couple of matches where she, you know, had to wrestle some really tough customers. And um, one match, she had a pretty good bloody nose. And I went over and said, are you OK? When the trainer was, you know, fixing her up and said, and she said, yeah, a little blood never hurt anyone. Building on the basics, Tessa became a student of the sport. So I have a notebook and before all of my matches, uh, I make sure to try to do research on the girl that I know that I'm going to wrestle. So I write down in my notebook what I need to look out for. I write down my plan for the match, what takedowns I'm going to use, what breakdowns, what turns, whatever. That self-scouting and game planning paid off for the now junior captain. Just three years removed from being a first-time wrestler, Master became the school's first wrestler to ever advance the New England Interscholastic Wrestling Championships. It's not just a state champ for Division Three but an all-state champ. It's pretty big for me, uh, especially because I started and you, you didn't see much of a wrestler in me when I was a freshman, I'm gonna be honest. But, you know, there were people here that believed in me, Coach Russo, Coach Scopa, and they put their time into me. And I'm glad that I could kind of return on their investment. There's no secret, you have to work hard, work continuously, and work harder than your opponent to do that. Now, that's easier said than done. You know, it sounds, it sounds simple, but it's not easy. And, and Tessa is the epitome of that. In Providence this past weekend, Master proved she's one of the top wrestlers in the region with a third place finish at the New England. Tessa Master is this week's BZ's MVP. These four high school students are making an impact on the ice. Ranked number one in their division, the Tewksbury Memorial High School hockey team is looking to win their second state championship in three years. They're fine student athletes. They're fine examples of Tewksbury High. They represent us very, very well. He's talking about senior captains, Matt Cook, Jeremy and Sonia and Tyler Barnes, who are helping to lead the team's offense. But defenseman and fellow co-captain Cooper Robillard had another goal in mind, and this one was a huge score for the school. Cooper came up with the idea to launch Teacher Appreciation Day. Each Friday since the start of the hockey season, a player on the team will give his game jersey to a teacher or school administrator who's had a huge impact on them. Cooper made a uh, pretty detailed presentation to myself and Mr. Long, our principal, had a sit-down meeting, like, like a regular meeting. It was pretty impressive. Um, and brought this idea to us, and we bought in. The staff has bought in, and it's been a home run for us. What made you come up with your idea? You know, some of these teachers, I've been with them for a couple years now as a senior, and uh, I just, I see how much effort they put in, not just in the classroom, but outside too. And I wanted a way to kind of appreciate those teachers. Cooper and his co-captains have been friends since preschool and they weren't surprised about who came up with the idea. Coop was always the caring one in the group. Like, he was always the one, like, you're feeling down, he'd come up to you. So I'm not surprised he did something like this and brought it to our school. It first came to me through Cooper. We all thought it would be a great idea just to kind of give back to the community, like, 
all the teachers and staff members that do all this stuff for us in school. They always really help us out, especially when it comes to hockey season. Who'd you give your jersey to? Um, I gave my jersey to uh, Miss Hill, it's my um, AP psychology teacher. I feel like, like her as a person and as a teacher has really like impacted my life in a positive way. Did you surprise them? Uh, yeah, they definitely were surprised. When I gave her the jersey, she wore it the whole day and we took a picture together. She was like going down the halls, going into classrooms. It was pretty awesome. For me, it was like getting an Academy Award. That's not something that students typically do. You know, you don't get a lot of thank yous and stuff. Like, you know that they appreciate it, but they don't often go out of their way. Well, first off, I cried. I cried right away. Um, but I felt really grateful and recognized. The kind gesture coming from Cooper and his teammates is making a profound impact on the school's culture. You know, it just shows them that they care about mm -hmm. school, the community, and especially the teachers who, you know, they're very important in their lives. You know what I mean? People take, kind of take teachers for granted. How special is this hockey team? Well, I'll tell you this, I, until this year, I'd never gone to a hockey game. Really? So, I mean, I love my students, I love my job, but there's something about this particular team, and I have a lot of the boys on my caseload, so I know a lot of them. But when Cooper gave me his jersey, I felt like I needed to start going to the games. When you see somebody else wearing your jersey, how does it make you feel? It's pretty awesome. It's like, you really, you don't know how it feels until you see like, like a teacher wearing it. And I was talking to some of the other boys and they felt the same way. To see like your science teacher like wearing their jersey in the classroom, everyone's coming in, seeing it, it's pretty cool. Cooper Robillard is this week's BZ's MVP. He's confident, skilled, and can dribble in his sleep. Meet six foot five Patrick Odie, a high school guard that can shoot lights out. Come on, he can shoot. Money. I saw you shooting on the court here, and you didn't miss. <laughs> Just shoot every day. You know, every day, get in the gym, work on your mechanics, and shoot as much as you can. Patrick plays like a senior, but he's only a freshman. He already has D1 offers, with a ton more to come. He attends Cats Academy in Braintree, a private boarding school with elite basketball talent. The school itself is an international boarding school, and so 90% of our kids are from all over the world. What makes Odie different? He hasn't forgotten his roots. His mom is Brazilian, his dad American. But Patrick will go to Brazil just to give back. In fact, he started his own camp there for kids, the Patrick Odie Basketball Camp. His mom came up with the idea, Brazil, here they come. I wanted to bring that same culture of basketball to Brazil. Put Brazil in the map, not just for soccer, but also sure. for basketball. And so that's when I came up with the idea which to go to Brazil and have a camp and help those kids there to get to a different level. It's always about helping others. He's always been uh, the type of kid that likes to help other kids, especially younger kids that look up to him and say, hey, I want to, you know, could I get a jump shot? And he'll bring them to our house and train them. My Brazilian brother over here. Yeah. While Odie helps kids in Brazil, he's also helping his high school team here in the States. Patrick recruited Miguel Sosa from Brazil, a 6'8 sophomore, to join him at Cats. Miguel is his right-hand guy. How did he get you to come here? Uh, so I played against Patrick in, uh, I think, I think it was, I was 13, yeah, I was like 13. And yeah. then uh, he, his family just, uh, blast me and help me to get in America. Because in Brazil, like, they don't have, like, that much training. Like, they don't have, like, courts to play on. Sometimes the courts are, like, broke and, like, sure. and they're wet and stuff like that. So the there's baskets not, aren't great. Yeah, the baskets are, like, some don't even have, like, nets. Some are bent and stuff like that. Uh, his, Miguel, he got a great opportunity to, like, come to the U.S. Odi averages over 20 points a game. Last summer, he was selected to play on the Brazilian U16 national team. He's ranked the number one freshman in New England. He's loaded with talent, and according to Brandon Ball, his trainer, his work ethic is through the roof. My favorite quote that he used to say when I first met him is he didn't want to, he didn't want to leave the gym until, until I bleed, until I bleed. How far can he go? Uh, sky's the limit. On his grades, you ask, he has no choice. Mom and dad Man. are strict. All A's and one B, I think. Wow. Pretty good. I've been working on it. You know, my parents, if I would get like a low grade or something, my grades are dropping, they would take everything away from me. You know that's good for you. That's good for me. You know, I hated it, but like, I know they were trying to do it, so, you know, I could be better after they did that. My, actually, my grades actually went to all A's. That's awesome. He's got to work as hard on his grades as he does his basketball. As long as he does that, we'll give him all the support that he needs. He 
he's Patrick Oddy, this week's BZ's MVP. Where is the athlete who can actually become what they once revered? We all would go and see Foxborough play as kids, and they were a really successful program always. In the case of Cam Collins, she grew up looking up to Foxborough High School's girls basketball team. These are people that you see and you kind of think of them. My fourth grade self thought they were celebrities. She would talk about how during the national anthem they would stand together and tap their toes down the line during the national anthem. So she was picking up on every little thing they did in every tradition and she wanted to be part of that. Little did she know back then, she'd soon be on her way to becoming one of the school's most prolific scorers of all time. After watching her older sister, Raise banners with the Warriors. Kind of jumping on that culture, jumping on that, you know, work hard and the Warrior spirit, and yeah, it's history pretty much. Adopting that Warrior spirit, let's just say, came natural to Cam. In fact, she felt right at home with that winning culture. The house is competitive with everything. It starts with us. Her father is a Cambridge firefighter. Her mom, a Foxborough police officer. She's a police officer, so we, so we right work harder most of the time than they do. Police officers? Yeah. yeah. It's, it's like that. You got that dynamic. It's, it's, it, <laughs> we, we go through this all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so like the, the kids feed off of it and then they're competitive. <laughs> gotcha. You may recognize both from the show Survivor. Oh, they competed like together you. once. The winner of Survivor Second Chance. Jeremy went on to win in Cambodia. <laughs> teaching his kids a valuable lesson in the process. For Survivor, I wanted it for 10 years, and every year they would call me and deny me. I would, I would train for Survivor as if I was gonna be playing every year. So uh, we kind of instill in our kids that you don't know when, what the future holds, but you always have to be ready. When the time came for Cam to lead Foxborough, she was ready. Becoming a two-time league MVP, putting up north of a thousand points over the course of her high school career. This year was a big year that like she had to look at things different. She knew that there was a lot on the team's back. She had to play some different roles and seeing that growth with her and like her basketball IQ really um, evolve was was awesome. This month, she willed the Warriors to their second straight state championship. She touched my heart this season. She, she crushed it, she, uh, like I don't even want to get emotional, but she, she really showed me her drive. To be able to be part of that program and add to that success, add to the banners, it's, it's an honor. While her senior season's now in the books, Collins is preparing for a new chapter in her basketball life, planning to leave home to play Division I for Ryder University in New Jersey. I'm taking a lot of Foxborough with me, you know, the, the community, the culture the, is, is what I was looking for for my, you know, college pick. An example out of Foxborough of life coming full circle. Cam Collins is this week's BZ's MVP. Christina Pham learned her basketball skills on the streets of Dorchester at Fields Corner playing with fierce competition and growing up with a single mom in public housing. A point guard at Nobles and Greenell Prep School in Dedham, this high school junior did not get there the easy way. I think it's very humbling and I don't think a lot of people, especially where I go to school, kind of understand what it means to come from the city. Um, I live in the projects, but I kind of grew up around Dorchester playing basketball. We hear a lot of, obviously, a lot of negativity around like the neighborhood that we, we grew up in, but the reality is there's a lot of there's a lot of greatness that comes out of there, a lot of positive stuff. And for her, I think the community has really shaped her. And, you know, they, she sees it every day, how they rally behind her. And she knows they don't have the opportunity that she has. And she, she, she captures that. Christina's mom, Trish Pham, and Uncle Vin Bowie are Vietnamese refugees. And they know firsthand the challenges our local immigrants face. And although born in the U.S., Christina can relate. When you see other immigrants come over here now, what do you want for them? As an immigrant who may not speak English um, and comes to America hoping for better, I think a chance is a great way to put it. Um, they're not any less deserving than anyone else. Christina takes nothing for granted and enjoys giving back, paying it forward by teaching younger girls all the skills she learned from those who helped to raise her on the courts. I never thought that I would want to be a coach. like kind of never really in my mind, but being around these kids and actually 
helping them and kind of being almost a mentor or a big sister to them is, has been really fun. Last year, Christina traveled to Africa through Shooting Touch, an AAU basketball program based in Boston and Rwanda that uses a sport to improve health and opportunity gaps for youth and women facing inequalities. You got a chance to travel to Rwanda? Mm -hmm. What was that experience like? Living in the city, I kind of feel like I have to be grateful, but then going to Rwanda and really seeing what it's like to have nothing, um, and then still seeing people have joy um, while playing basketball, I think was very eye-opening. Much of Christina's success can be attributed to her uncle, who serves as her coach, not just on the court, but in life. What does your uncle mean to you? I mean, I think in a lot of ways he's my best friend. Um, someone who's always been there for me. I think it's easy to say, like, he's my, yes, he's my coach, he's my trainer, but he's my father figure. Um, my mom's a single mom, and so he's really done everything for me. I would say it's uh, definitely a father-daughter type relationship. From a very young age, I was able to instill that mindset in her that these things don't happen for everybody. And while you may not start off uh, on a level playing field with everybody else, there's, it's not an excuse to not get where they're going. Vin's guidance, along with Christina's work ethic and Dorchester upbringing, are the ingredients that make her overall game strong and has earned her more than a dozen division offers from elite institutions that include Yale, Harvard, and St. John's. How would you describe her game? She's dangerous on the floor. She's uh, becoming a real good floor leader right now. And uh, she's, a, she's a combo guard, combo basically guard. a combo point guard but a shooter, deadly shooter. Christina recently showed off her talent at the third annual Medina Dixon All-Star event right here in Boston, a tournament that features some of the best local girls in high school basketball. I'm WNBA guard for the Dallas Wings, Veronica Burton, yes, my daughter, got a chance to meet Christina and spend a few minutes with her at the tournament. What's your goal now? I want to play high division basketball, um, and I want to be a star point guard in the future, and I think after all that, I want to play professionally um, and then, you know, stay in the game somehow. Christina Pham, this week's BZ's MVP.